So let's begin the exciting topic about catecholamine synthesis. And I'll also talk about some of the degradation of catecholamines. Um, and we will cover the very basics, and then we'll get more deep. Uh, I am going to have a little cheat sheet up here for me, so spelling, uh, there's a lot to go over for this. Uh, and I just want to make sure that I'm spelling everything correctly. So let's begin. Basically, we're going to start with the amino acid tyrosine. And that's going to get converted to DOPA, which gets converted to dopamine, norepinephrine, and then finally epinephrine. So let's talk about tyrosine really quick. Well, if you watched my essential amino acid video, you would know that tyrosine is not an essential amino acid, meaning we can make tyrosine in our body. De novo. Okay, so how do we create tyrosine? Well, we're going to make it through phenylalanine. Phenylalanine gets converted to tyrosine via phenylalanine hydroxylase. So phenylalanine hydroxylase is going to be the enzyme that converts phenylalanine to tyrosine. Phenylalanine, like I said, is, is an essential amino acid. So private Tim Hall is how I remember it. And the P in private is phenylalanine. So phenylalanine hydroxylase. So if we're missing that phenylalanine hydroxylase, we have a disorder. And it's actually a fairly common disorder. And it's known as phenylketonuria, PKU. So if we have the disease PKU, it's we're, we're ingesting phenyl, phenylalanine in our diet. And you may see phenylalanine all over. Uh, in pop, for example, they have on the, on the little warning label, they say, this product contains phenylalanine. Uh, do not take if you're a phenyl, or if you have PKU, phenylketonuria. Uh, it's because you're missing this enzyme. You cannot degrade it. So uh, if you are missing this enzyme, then tyrosine becomes an essential amino acid. It could be the 11th uh, essential amino acid, depending on the circumstance. But if you're missing this enzyme, tyrosine then becomes essential. You need to take it into the diet. Otherwise, you can't create all this important stuff in the body, all these catecholamines. So let's talk about PKU really quick. Then we'll... Then we'll dive into the rest. Uh, it is an autosomal recessive disorder. Uh, meaning you need two small recessive alleles. Uh, you're missing the phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme typically in the liver. Uh, so you're missing the liver because your liver is going to break down that phenylalanine. Uh, another important reason why you don't want to lose your liver. And then also you'd be able to note Phenyl uh, ketones. Phenyl ketones. You'll, you'll see phenyl ketones into the urine. It's because the phenylalanine gets broken down into phenyl pyruvate, and another name for phenyl pyruvate is going to be a phenyl ketone. So you'll see that in the urine. Henceforth, the name phenyl ketone, phenyl ketonuria, urine. All right, so that's where the name comes from. Uh, a couple other important things are, if you have a child that comes in with phenylketonuria, they'll have a musty, musty odor to them, a musty smell. And that's, that's a great buzzword. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different smells that you can kind of tip off to, to the disease. My favorite is cheesy. If you have a cheesy smell, but uh, we'll, let's not get musty. We'll stick with musty. All right, so uh, treatment for this is you're going to avoid uh, the amino acid that you're not able to eat, so you can't have phenylalanine. All right, um, and again, you do need to have tyrosine in your diet then. So now let's move over to tyrosine. I'm going to erase this. So you do need all the board space you can get. Okay, so now let's move on to tyrosine. Tyrosine gets converted to dopamine through the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase. Tyrosine hydroxylase. So this is the second enzyme that we're talking about. So we convert tyrosine to dopa, and then dopa to dopamine via dopa decarboxylase. I'm struggling with spelling again today. Spelling is not my strong point. So we get 
DOPA decarboxylase, and in the process, we're gonna lose a CO2, so we're gonna lose a carbon dioxide, not that important. Uh, and then we move on to dopamine, so now we're left with dopamine, but we want our end goal to be epinephrine. So what enzyme are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna need to use the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylation, or hydroxylase. Dopamine beta hydroxylase. So dopamine beta hydroxylase. And that beta dopamine hydroxylase will let us create norepinephrine. And once we're at norepinephrine, then we get this whopper of an enzyme. And I'm going to have to cheat with this. It's going to be Phenolethanolamine N methyltransferase. Quite a mouthful. Uh, but that's going to be our final enzyme required, and then hence we get epinephrine. Yay. Okay, so all this is going to be taking place in your body, uh, your adrenal glands, uh, and, but you remember that we have the breakdown of phenylalanine to tyrosine in the liver. Uh, okay, so these are the enzymes required, and you know kind of important, you realize that DOPA gets converted to dopamine via DOPA decarboxylase, dopamine to norepinephrine via dopamine beta hydroxylase. A little, a little common sense, um, but some of these require cofactors. So the conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine is going to require uh, vitamin C, so ascorbic acid. Uh, so if you have scurvy, if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, you're also going to have a norepinephrine and epinephrine uh, synthesis deficiency. Also, you're going to need SAM, which is going to be a methyl donor. And then it's going to spit out a homocysteine as a result. So you're going to need a SAM, a methyl donor group, to create norepinephrine to epinephrine. And then lastly, uh, what I want to point out is tetrahydrobiopterin. Tetrahydrobiopterin, THB. THB is going to be required for the synthesis of tyrosine to dopamine. And this is going to form a DHB molecule. Um, and to regenerate this THB, we're going to need an NAD. So you get your NADPHs through the pentose phosphate pathway, and I have a video covering that. Uh, however, this is also, when you think NADPH, you think antioxidant, uh, but you also need to remember that it's used to regenerate this tetrahydrobiopterin, which is going to be used for catecholamine synthesis. So an important concept uh, to remember that THB is going to be required for the conversion of tyrosine to dopamine. And that's where, if you have an NADPH deficiency, uh, let's say you have a G6PD deficiency, the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency, you're not able to go into the pentose phosphate shunt, and then therefore you cannot create NADPH, you're going to have catecholamine synthesis problems. All right. Let's delete some stuff over here. I'll leave up those enzymes and some of the... Okay, so we just talked about catecholamine synthesis. Now let's talk about side reactions. We've got a couple side reactions that we can talk about. Tyrosine can be converted into the thyroid hormone. So thyroxine. So thyroxine. Uh, DOPA can get converted into melanin. An interesting uh, side note is, if you're not able to convert DOPA into melanin due to a tyrosinase uh, problem, you can get albinism. So that's a little clinical correlate. If you can't create melanin, your melanocytes cannot pigment the skin, you get albinism. All right, so now we talked about kind of the catecholamine synthesis, talked about some of the side pathways. Now let's talk about the degradation of tyrosine. So the degradation of tyrosine, I'm really going to have to rely on my sheet here because this is 
spelling is a little hairy, um, but essentially there's three different diseases that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the tyrosinemia type 2, tyrosinemia type 1, and then in the middle we'll have alcaptonuria. Alright, so tyrosine gets degraded first into an intermediate, which then gets degraded into homogentistic homogentistic acid. Alright, so this is going to be our first disorder. If we're unable to degrade tyrosine into homogentistic acid, we're going to have tyrosinemia type 2. Type 2. Tyrosinemia type 2. Alright, so from that, the homogentistic acid is going to be degraded into terrible name maleacetoacetic acid so this is going to be an important one if we're unable to do this uh, we're, we'll have alcaptonuria so alcaptonuria is going to be a deficiency in the enzyme homogentistic acid oxidase So some of the characteristics of uh, alcaptonuria, which is going to be the homogentistic acid oxalase deficiency, is going to be we're going to have urine that's going to be black upon standing to room air. So when a patient urinates, and if you just leave it there for a little bit, uh, the, the reaction, the homogentistic acid buildup is going to react with the air, it's going to turn the urine black. And then also alcaptonuria has typical joint problems you'll have terrible uh, arthroses. So we've also got another pathway that we have to go over. So this maleoacetoacetic acid gets converted into eumarine. Fumaryl acetoacetate, um, which gets converted finally into fumarate plus acetoacetate. This last step is easy because we have fumarate, acetoacetate, all you do is you separate the name out, you get a fumarate and you get an acetoacetate. So the end product for tyrosine breakdown, not the end product, but the one that we'll finish with is going to be fumarate and acetoacetate, um, and then those can feed into the system elsewhere. So if you have a deficiency in this enzyme, we had tyrosinemia type uh, 2 over here. This one's going to be tyrosinemia type 1. So if you have a deficiency in this enzyme, and that enzyme is simply the fumaroacetoacetate uh, hydroxylase. I'm just going to write FAA hydroxylase. Very uncommon disorders, um, but just realize that a homogentistic acid oxalase is going to be alcaptonuria, while if you have a fumaryl acetoacetate hydroxylase deficiency, you'll have a tyrosinemia type 1. Uh, if you have the inability to convert tyrosine to homogentistic acid, that's going to be a, uh, a tyrosinemia type 2. We covered PKU, we covered albinism shortly, uh, we covered the synthesis of dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine using all these enzymes. Uh, that's, this is going to be a good place to stop. Um, again, I did cover pretty much just the basics. Um, I tried to leave everything as, as basic as I could, especially with the degradation of tyrosine, because it can get really complicated. If you have any questions, feel free to, feel free to uh, ask. Otherwise, I love enjoying comments, uh, so leave, leave plenty of comments. Click like if you found this useful and subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much.